If real growth is higher, you have these powerful long-term trends that are working in favor of that. Um, how is the Fed at two and a quarter to two and a half percent short-term interest rates restraining that? In other words, you mentioned that the Fed has sort of repivoted because it seems to want to move toward where the market is uh, at this point. Um, what's the difference if the Fed were at two percent or one and a half or two and, uh, two and a quarter to two and a half as it is right now? Well, because the gig economy is important, but it's not the only economy. And economics works on the mar the economy works on the margin and on confidence. And there's a lot of whole other areas, autos, old line retail, global trade, big, that are deteriorating. And I actually think the Fed is right um, to be worried. I think we could be in an inflection point, and I think they'd be crazy not to think so. I have no problem with what Chairman Powell has done. I think he inherited a very tough job. I, my biggest problem is what Yellen did. We had a booming economy, fairly early cycle. I know I talk too much about the Fed, but at the time I said they should sneak one in every time they can until they get to some normal rate. I deeply, deeply believe in a capitalist system you need a hurdle rate for investment. And if that rate is not up there somewhere around three or four, people are going to get crazy. Investors are going to get crazy. Corporations are going to get crazy. Zombies are going to stay in business. And we had the opportunity to get there. Yeah. But that doesn't well, mean... Well, she did sneak one in December 2015. The markets kind of continued falling apart, and then they were on hold for a year. Yeah, but we, we had that whole period in 2016 um, where, in my opinion, they could have gotten to three and a half or four. We'll never know, but they could have at least tried. Okay, but, but once confidence turns down, um, you know, you got to deal with a hand you're dealt. And, and Chairman Powell has now got a tough situation on his hands. You, you've if he was at four, I'd say we should really be cutting and it would be great, but we're not at four. But does that mean you think that there are bubbles that have built up in the equity markets and other markets around if there are still zombie companies that are out there? Have we not shaken things out? Because we haven't been at three or four percent. And yeah, we, ha we have uh, 10 trillion in corporate debt. We had six trillion. I think you and I did an interview for Delivering Alpha and it was like seven and a half trillion at the mm -hmm. time. So ironically, by trying to achieve escape velocity, we are in worse shape for a recession now than if things had slowed down when the period you're talking about, Mike, because there's been a lot of nonsense that's going on since then. Now we have the global trade situation. So you just, but you know, I don't know. You're, you're, I, if, from what I'm hearing, your views have evolved on, on the Fed at this point. And, and I, I like what you're saying because it's a much more, uh, I think, positive place that it puts us if it's productivity and innovation and technology that has us stuck in this low interest rate environment. And I agree with you, you said you don't know if I agree with you. I've been saying, do you know what I pay for Google Maps? What would I pay for Google Nothing. Maps? It's yeah. changed my, when am I going to get somewhere? Oh, I know, when do I have to leave? I know when I have to leave because it says, I, oh, but there's traffic on that route. If I had that when I lived in L.A., I would, I would have got off the freeways instead of being, I, my, I would have saved seven years of my life. With Google Maps. And By so, the way, this affects inflation too. Yeah. Quality adjustment. That's, that's we're why probably, rates are so low. If this was measured properly, we are probably already in deflation. Um, by the way, that's a good thing. We have good deflations and bad deflations. That's my objection to the 2% inflation target for all seasons. Right. In the late 1800s, in the, in the Industrial Revolution, we had 3% deflation, and we were growing at 8% real. So I don't know where we are. I don't know whether we're at zero, whether we're at one, we're at two. But I wish we'd stop worrying about it because we're in a productivity shock, and this thing can't be measured. So to sit there and count decimal points until at least, A, the economic statistics catch up with what's happened, the preciseness, I just think, is... I mean, this didn't exist 15 years ago. How much is this thing worth and what this is capable of? I, I have the Encyclopedia Britannica yeah. everywhere I go. I mean I, and that, I mean, I don't even know what Andrew does on this I'm thing. I'm glad I mean, you mentioned the Cyclo Encyclopedia Britannica because you used to pay for that. Yeah. And that added to GDP. 
So relative to now, that's a negative. Music. I now, by the way, I'm not an idiot. I know that some of this shows up in advertising, right. but a lot of that is coming out of TV, and the whole value, there's no way it but shows your larger up. point is that we're, we're not correct, or the Fed is not correct, to fear the Japan scenario in this instance. No, not at all. And it explains why Treasury yields are where they are, probably. Yeah, and, and this whole obsession with the zero bound, you know why we're at the zero bound? Because they put rates at the zero bound. We have never had deflation that I can find that started because we were near the zero bound. We have deflation in every instant because there was an asset bubble. So if I was trying to create deflation, like I'm this evil Darth Vader, oh, let's create deflation, I would have done, done exactly what the Fed did from 2012 until a couple of years ago. I'm completely confused. Do you feel good about things right now or bad? <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about the long term because, you know, and I don't like the victory laps about how great things are because we've used monetary policy um, to create a lot of buildups. By the way, I haven't even gone into what the government's done. Well, and, and okay, there's no way we'd be looking at a trillion too. dollar deficit right. at full employment and no one would mind if the government hadn't been, if the Fed hadn't been running policy to enable these guys and then you have President Trump running around saying well we need to keep interest rates low because the debt is high well Jesus why do you think the debt is high and if you want the debt to explode more just keep interest rates well, low I'm concerned about the long term as a practitioner um, I don't my central case is we're not going into a recession I'm worried about it uh, and with the with the new view of the Fed you know, I'm a liquidity guy. Uh, I'm not worried. I'm not that worried about markets right now.